This is a blaring out with Eric Blair show. We're backstage at the 2009 Hootenanny with Patricia Day of the Horror Pops. Patricia, what do you love about the Hootenanny? This is your like fourth or fifth time playing the Hootenanny. Mm, what do I love? I mean, I love this kind of like coming home. It's it has that because I I recognize all the people out there. Like a lot of them, are like. It's kind of like going to a wedding where you kind of see your your far cousins and stuff again. It's like it has that feel, like that party feel of a wedding. I kind of like that. What inspired the title of your new album and your song Kiss Kiss Kill Kill? We just were going for that little noir feel and it was kind of it sounded like a title of a Hitchcock and so it's quite what we went with. And you guys have a song called Boot to Boot, is it? Boot to Boot. Yeah, that's actually the one time I Horror Pops always refrained from speaking out about any political or religious or anything like that because we feel it's, music is about entertainment, uh, for us at least. I'm not saying anybody else is wrong, but for us we just want people to have a good time. But at the time when we recorded Kiss Kiss Kill Kill, there was uh, riots in, in Copenhagen, our home time of, of Denmark. And uh, most of our friends were in jail or, or in hospitals. And so we really felt that we actually, for the first time, had to write a song about, you know, being a, a punk rocker and, and, and living that life and, and just getting fucked over by pol politicians and the police and all that. So now we've done it. We, we've actually expressed our opinion about something. And that was okay. It was cool. We tried it out and we made a video. And actually, in, in the video, there's clips like you see worldwide. There's CNN. There's all these news stations from the worldwide. We took the clips from, from Copenhagen. And there's our friends in all these pictures. So that's kind of cool. Now there was apparently it was a, uh, like a kind of a flop house or a, a punk rock venue. It was the one and only punk rock venue and house. It was a place for kids to go, uh, like punk rockers and you know general outsiders. You just go, they have, they have their own house, you could go stay there if you didn't have a place to stay, you know, they're always cooking food, and it was like a little small community taking care of each other, and but unfortunately we got a, a government that was, uh, or still is there, and not very nice to anybody that's different, so it got closed down, it got bought up by a Christian community, and they tore down the building, not because they wanted to build, but because they wanted to get rid of the people. Yeah. That was kind of sad. What do you think of... What's your opinion of the Christian community in Copenhagen at this point, after they did that? Well, to me it's so weird because, again, we come from Denmark, every uh, religion is very, very liberal, and it's like people's own business, nobody's like pointing fingers. Like, And if you go to Copenhagen and you ask people on the streets, do you believe in God, 80% will say no. And that's just how it is, as Danish people. All of a sudden, actually having somebody really religious moving into politics is so new to us that it's all we like flabbergasted basically we can't believe it's you know wow you know there's christians in Denmark I didn't know you know <laughs> so I'm still like trying to keep an open mind about it and see like okay maybe they need to adjust just as much as everybody else you know let's talk about the song heading to the disco mm -hmm. what inspired that two girls I once knew uh, a little younger and that hadn't really experienced the uh, the feel of the 80s and, and was trying to relive it but never really got the point. Um, all the stuff that they liked was uh, the stuff back then that was, you know, uncool. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I never, the first, I, I don't like to judge people on stuff like that, but they took me out for um, my birthday and they took, they were like, oh, we gotta make you feel young. And then they took me to this show, which was a metal band that um, did 80s cover songs and played the whole 80s thing with doing their hair on stage and stuff and I was like <laughs> I used to date guys that looked like that <laughs> I don't want to relive it yeah. ever again so when I got home that night I was just like I was mad I was angry I was like oh I had to write a song about it in the song you say poison was never cool no if you were into metal in the 80s uh -huh. well I, I was a little young in the 80s too I admit it I got the, like the leftover stuff but uh Still, if you went to metal, like, you know, it wasn't, Bon Jovi was never metal, Poison was never metal. That was not metal, you know? It, that was the cheesy yeah, side hair kick. Metal. Yeah, 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 not even good hair metal. I mean, if you're into hair metal, there was better hair metal bands. Like, what, what would you say? What, what, what would be a better hair metal band? Skid Row, for example. Yeah. See, that's a hair metal band that we actually could play too, you know? Nice. And I was in love with, with, with the singer at a point. <laughs> that's a little secret for you. <laughs> Sebastian Bach. Yeah. What do you love about life in L.A. the most? I can have my cars. I can drive them year-round. 
I can wake up, I can look at palm trees. And I'm not standing at some bus stop in Copenhagen with cold feet and wet hair. I mean, come on, I, it was nuts to love. What is the most romantic moment that you can think of from your life? Actually, when I got my first upright bass, believe it or not. I saw a necroman walk down the street from my window and it was raining, it was Copenhagen, it was always raining. It's like worse in Seattle. And he was like carrying this bass on his shoulder. I was like, yeah, that bass is for me. <laughs> I didn't care about him. I was like all about the bass. <laughs> what is Patricia's favorite cartoon? Pepe Le Pew. Okay. That and the Tasmanian Devil. Cool. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I married that character, to be quite honest. What brings you the most peace in your life? I don't want peace. Really? No, I want to be doing stuff all the time. All the time. But don't you feel that doing stuff all the time brings you a modicum of peace? It does. But I gotta be busy to feel in peace. I gotta be like a little bit of stress and a little hectic and yeah. So when you have downtime, do you almost feel uncomfortable to sit in front of the TV or relax? Oh no, I have days of watching Law and Order nonstop. <laughs> I admit that. Dun, dun. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Now, uh, 2009 has, has been sadly a year of tragedy in a lot of people's lives. Uh, recently, Michael Jackson and you know, Lux Interior, a lot of people, and the drummer for the Necromantics. Oh yeah, yeah, that was uh, one experience I, I hoped I'd never experienced, and I hope I, I, I never want to go through that again, ever. Losing Andrew was the uh, saddest moment in, in my life. He was a good, good kid. Yeah. Well, very, too good, that's what happens. Now, now, you know, with a death like that that is so close to you, does it make you look at your own mortality? No, actually it was worse than that. <laughs> it sounds bad, but actually uh, we had a hard time wanting to play. Actually play music, which is, that's our whole life. That is our life. I mean, um, and that, so, so that was actually more hard than considering dying because not playing is actually worse than dying. I can't explain it different because that's all we do and that's all we can do. So. Um, so it made me think about playing and what's important about that. And actually Andrew's family uh, convinced us to, uh, to keep going. What was touring with Danzig like? <laughs> Mother. <laughs> um, yeah, that was good. It was interesting. It was, it was, it was interesting for me. Uh, Necromine and Niedermeyer didn't know about Danzig uh, as much as I did. I was a fan. I was a big fan. So I was like, when we got the tour off, and even though it was not really our audience and it probably wouldn't, wouldn't work that well, I was just like, we just got to do it just so I can like relive being 14, you know. I didn't get to talk to him once. I didn't get to meet him. It was, it was, that was the first time ever I've been on a tour and not actually hung out with people. But, you know, I guess after so many years of doing what he's doing, he kind of wants to stick to himself. But uh, I mean, I know there was people taking bets whether or not that tour would end out with a video coming out with me punching him down. <laughs> but didn't happen. <laughs> he didn't cause any reason to, so. <laughs> so it was a dream come true though for you to be able to share the stage. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he's a legend, I mean, yeah. misfits, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's so, of course. The Blaring Out Show.